Thank you, sir. So we're gonna try to get the board right and also in the right lighting so you can see what I'm writing on there. Um, thank you to our, our, our production team for catching that last week. I was looking back at the video, I was like, oh, they really couldn't see what I was writing online until we like scooted it. And so that, that was, thank you. Um, <laughs> you know, love comes at us from every place. You can, you, you can get love from the production team, love from administration, love from the person that bakes wonderful goodies for us in the morning. Oh, my God. Thank you, Lindsay. Let me tell you something. You come to church, there's a lot of ways to get loved on. <laughs> you know, uh, 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 uh. We have been on a series that, that has just become something entirely, I, I didn't plan this to, to do this at all. I was like, I'm going to preach the power of the weapons of warfare. We're going to just slaughter demons in Jesus' name, right? That, that's, that was like where I got started on this. And it was like, you know, as soon as I got started, then we started to say, well, no, tactically, though, we're picking the plans of the enemy apart. And there's like a glory on it. And, as, and so I just have to go where the Spirit of the Lord is going, um, and the Spirit of the Lord keeps going. It just keeps going, and, and so now we have this the whiteboard session. Last week, we, <laughs> we didn't even get to the sermon because the whiteboard session took the whole time. But you know what? It, the, Lord, the Lord was on it. And you know how I know the Lord was on it? Because my wife watched that three times. She came back. <laughs> Man, that was so good. I had to watch it again. And that is not common in my household, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> because, like most pastors' wives, you know, it's like, yeah, I heard you say that before. <laughs> so the Lord is definitely moving. But, um, yeah, so, so, so last week we, we had a deep discussion, and we talked about honor. We talked about honor and dishonor and, and how the enemy trades through that to take. The, you know, you could have a house full of really powerful people like this one. But. So much out of order, just so much that's unsafe, so much that isn't clicking in, in, in kingdom alignment that, you know, you have demoralization, disheartening, you know, and, and it's like people, it's easy to lose the will to go to battle, right? When you don't feel that safety, that love, that refreshing environment, uh, when you're among the brethren, you know, the Bible exhorts us. It says, do not forsake the assembling together of yourselves, Right? But, but there's a reason, We're, because, because w when we come together, Christ is supposed to be found in our midst. You, you see what I'm saying? Like, we come together and Christ is formed, like, he, he literally abides in and among his people, right? But there are certain things that can happen when the people of God come together where it's like, yeah, I carry Jesus, you carry Jesus, you carry Jesus. But because of this, 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 that, a bunch of walls fall, you know, and we're singing about walls coming down. A bunch of walls fall, right? Offense, bitterness, jealousies, envies, backbiting, gossip, whatever, whatever that thing is, right? And then Christ is blocked from being encountered in our midst. I mean, and, and, and so that's the, one of the big plans of the enemy is to, is, is to block. And, and so God's like, all right, next, next up, next up, next up. Serving. Oh. All right, so, so we're going to just check our numbers online real quick and make sure we didn't lose too many people. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> See, today we got Ed blocking the door in the back. But <laughs> Serving. All right, so, 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 uh, we, 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 I have every intent of getting to the actual message on, on, on the warrior's war chest today, right? But, but there are some things I have to say about serving that it, I think is going to land in the name of Jesus very well, <laughs> very well. Can I tell you right at the outset, right at the outset, one of the reasons why people have a, a challenge with serving is because they have been used and improperly stewarded in their acts of goodwill and felt absolutely 
taken advantage of. So you go to a house and that happens and then you have to go through a period of recovery where it's like, wow, I have to recover from being taken advantage of, not being valued, not being honored. And, and then we come to another house and it's like, it's time to serve. And it's like, so we have, we have a bad taste in our mouth. It's like, well, I, I, I know what that means. That means dishonor and disrespect for me. I don't like it. Um, some of us are still on a recovery journey. Some of you are listening online because things didn't work out so well. You weren't taken care of. You really went through some tough stuff. You're like, I need to deprogram from church and, and, and just engage with the glory of the Lord and focus on my relationship. Right? Now, as a leader, I want you to know that my opinion is that people should be honored. In fact, what I want you guys to do right now is the same exercise we did last week. I want you to look at your neighbor. Find one. Find one if you have one. Y'all say, I honor you in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Oh, isn't that so good? Yeah. <laughs> see. I honor you all in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Feel this? It's like Jesus just showed up. In <laughs> he showed up for that one. You know, all right, so, so we understand, like, honor is very, but, but serving is on the same level. Now, I, now I'm going to hit you with something. I'm going I'm to hit you with something. All right, Mark chapter 10, verse 45. Mark chapter 10 and verse 45. Who is our God? Who is our God? Mark chapter 10 and verse 45. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Is there anybody in here that's confused about that statement? <laughs> Is there anybody that just saw that and got, like, you know, those trip, like, but that really means that he's here to, to be served, Dan Duvall. Is anybody? No. Okay, so we're not struggling with that. So the God that we agree, that we serve, also came to serve. So we serve, he serves. He serves, we serve. So serving is like an infinity loop. It just goes around and around and around and around. God, us. It's literally the culture of the kingdom. Serving. Serving, serving, serving. Now, some of us get confused, right, on this side. God serves me. Oh, only. Right? So I am here to be served by God. If I have a need, meet it. If I have a demand, meet it. If I have someone I need to see to pray for me, send them. Like, I, 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 gimme, gimme, my name is Jimmy. <laughs> then we have this other side. Watch this. We serve God only. It means I'm not worth the love of God. I'm not worth God showing up for me, intervening on my behalf, stepping in and delivering me. I'm, I, I am nothing more than a slave serving. I have no expectations because... I have an identity problem. So we have people that can actually land on either side of that serving conversation. What that's called is confusion. Confusion. It's confusion. Now, I've met both, right? I've met both. And sometimes people over here, they, 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 they actually mask the disappointment that they have towards God with a mindset and a belief system. Well, Maybe all of the ways that I feel like God let me down is really because this is how it's supposed to work. I just serve God. So I can't really 
trust him, but I will be loyal to him. Um, and then you have this person who just, gimme, 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 gimme. Where's my blessing? Where's my next? Where's my increase? Where's my open door? Come on, God. Give me the goodies. And, 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 and it's like, well, what, what's, what's your sacrifice? Oh, uh, uh, I, I think my pastor prays for me. He's like, no, what's your prayer life like, though? I don't have time for that. How often do you fast? Never. Um, um, what's, what's your private worship like? Uh, sometimes there's a Christian radio uh, playing if my wife leaves it on in the car. <laughs> gay man, gay man. So, so look. So we have to talk about serving because serving is a culture of the kingdom. And this is a place where the enemy destroys the house of God. Absolutely destroys the house of God on this subject. And I'll, and I'll, and I'll explain why. So, so let's, let, let me just read to you a little bit of a, a, a history on the early church in the book of Acts chapter 6. It says, now in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplying, there arose a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenists because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. Then the twelve summoned the multitude of the disciples and said, it is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. Someone say setting order in the house. Setting order in the house. Right. So we're going to talk about that. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith in the Holy Spirit, and Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas and Nicholas, a proselyte from Antioch, whom they set before the apostles when they had prayed, they laid hands on them. Then the word of God spread. Then the word of God spread. Then the word of God spread. And the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many priests were obedient to the faith. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. All right. So that's Acts 6, 1 through 8. Now, now the word of God spread in Acts chapter 6, verse 7, because there was core strength in the house. There was a division of labor. So there was an expanded context into which God could deliver multitudes. So also... Right? You have these apostles and, you know, I, you run into these churches, right, where, where people think, all right, this is how it works. The uh, board hires a pastor. That guy does our religion for us. He will sweep the floor. He will do the weddings. He will do the funerals. He will preach the sermons. He will give us free counseling, and we will give our $20 in the offering plate, and our expectation is he shows up. Otherwise, we might just fire him. So, now let me explain. Let me explain. Let me explain. I do not work for you. <laughs> so we're just going to ask that right now. <laughs> I do not work for you. And, and you know what? God likes that because, you know, he understands he's working with someone that isn't confused. <laughs> I work for Jesus. <laughs> now, now, a properly functioning church has job allocation. The apostles didn't actually have a heart condition that stopped them from serving tables. It wasn't a heart condition that made them step into the wisdom of the Lord to build core strength. What it was is the wisdom of the Lord leading them to establish core strength to receive a greater move of God. Now, how many of you want to move of God? Yeah. Right. And how many of you want to observe it from the sideline? 
right? So everybody that is not serving in a church or this one, you are on the sideline right now. Okay, so there it comes. Are you where you want to be? Now, now, now I'm going to talk about it because, because I want to move of God. And, and, you know, the cool thing is when people step into bride ministries, they get revelation that allows them to step into an actualization in Christ that is off the charts. I mean, we're, we're, we're not holding people hostage to broken belief systems about personal identity, about who God is, about the magnificence of their human spirit or their capacity. I mean, we took the roof off of everything. You go as high as you want. I mean, I, I preached a whole message on shining ones. I expect that there are people that are going to manifest the spirit to the front in 3D realms. In our midst, we're going to be looking at the faces of angels on people, right? And you know what? We're not going to send you out of the church because we think you're manifesting a demon. Too much glory. No. Come on in. Would you like to preach? Like, so, 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 so the thing is. The thing is, like, this is the house, right? This is where we're after that. But, you know, one of the things that is, is true of, of bride ministries is that we have a – how many of you have experienced our online platform? Yeah. Self-service <laughs> online platform. So what I realize is that all of my – can I just say my wife's really good ideas? Can I, can I say that? Can I say that? My wife has had so many really good ideas, right? So we've built this massive self-service platform. You can get delivered whenever you want. I, I, would, I, would, I would like to be delivered. You can go on our deliverance portal, get delivered right now. Literally, just push a button. And if it doesn't work, you can book a coach, push a button. What? And if you want more education, sign up for something, push a button. You could get a course and take it whenever you want on your own time anywhere in the world. All this self-service. You know what you need to do? Click a button. But now that culture doesn't translate into a local house. Right? On my own time, whenever I want what makes sense to me. So, so we have a, a, a bit of a, like, how do we get from there to like a happy church locally, you know, because what I, what I realized is we set up a, a really cool platform, but you know, it, I mean, wow. So, okay. So you get it, you get it right. Um, so, so we're on a journey because, because bride ministers, Katie, what we are doing is we are building a body of believers, right? We're not just building an online platform. It's two different worlds. And as a body of believers, when we come together, what we are going to be is the epicenter of a move of God that's going to have regional and ultimately international impact because that's where we're called. Those are where the tent pegs. They sit outside of Katy, Texas. Our tent pegs, are, they span out very far. And so in order to get to where we want to be and need to be, um, we, we need to get certain core fundamental things in our DNA. Certain core fundamental things in our DNA. One of those is serving. Bride Ministries is great at serving the needs of people with our online platform, but serving as an act of response to sonship in Christ is something that we need to build into the DNA of this community, which is why I have to talk about it. So, so, so here's the thing, right? Um, if you consider Alex or Todd Edwards, right? Now, both of them are leaders. And, and, and I will tell you something about these men that has to be said. Neither of them are allergic to a broom, a mop, or an errand. 100%. Todd is sitting here doing his intensives, three-day meetings where people have flown in and drove in from all over the place to sit under his wisdom and get an impartation. And he's cleaning the room with me here vacuuming while we're talking about things at 11 o'clock at night. That's who he is. It's what's in him. Right? There's a reason why 
God elevates those who have servanthood in their hearts and does not elevate those who are looking to be served. Because if you are looking to be served, you do not have the heart of Jesus. And you cannot impart the heart of Jesus to others. Right? And so, so we're talking about, like, like you know, you, you want to grow up in bride ministries and, and have exposure and, 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 and be blossoming within the context of this platform. Like, even though I haven't preached it that hard, I've believed it real hard. Let me, and and I, what I did, you know what I started doing when I was setting this all up to, to explain it to you guys? I was like, let me give them a list of the things that I do for this ministry. And then I started, and it got really long. And then I said, this isn't worth it. <laughs> Skip over that. Move on and keep it positive. So, so now, now, Luke chapter 22 has something to say, right? Verse 25. And he said to them, and this is Jesus talking. The kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and those who exercise authority over them are called benefactors, but not so among you. On the contrary, he who is greatest among you, let him be as the younger, and he who governs as he who serves. For who is greater, he who sits at the table or he who serves? Is it not he who sits at the table? Yet I am among you as one who serves, right? So there's a consistency around the messaging. Jesus doesn't deviate. Serving, serving, serving. Now, now let me give you a, a few examples of, of different styles of, of, of ministry and how this can, you know, play out. So, so number one, this is the church where the pastor does all serving. Okay? So... Let's just say that this is the pastor. This is capacity, okay? Capacity. This is need, okay? You all know what's going to happen here, right? So, so right here, this is, this is how the people feel most of the time. Okay. Why didn't he call me? Why didn't I get a birthday card? Why isn't there more worship in the house? Why don't we have three services a week? Because my work schedule doesn't allow me to make the 7 p.m. service on a Wednesday. Why, why, why? You know? Okay. And, and so there's grumbling. There's moaning. Right? And, and you know what this guy's going through? Why did I ever sign up for this? basically just a massive bonfire of pain. And if you think he's sad, okay, there's his wife. Right? It's tough. It's tough. Can I tell you something? This is, th th this is the wrong way to do things. This is the wrong way. Now, now the, the problem is, if you have a bunch of people with a heart condition, right, we hired our pastor, he works for the board, he does this, I'm going to show up, give my $20, and like that heart condition holds the entire realm hostage to a broken, there is no capacity for a move of God here. Zero. God cannot move. He can't send 200 new believers and converts into this situation. You know what will happen if he does? It'll make a bigger fire. What are we going to do with all these people that are now broken, wounded, needing counseling, needing help, needing transformation, needing discipleship, and we can't help any of them? All right. So, so that's number one. You all want that church? No. no. Okay. All right. So we are all on the same page. Now. I have to talk about it. I have to talk about serving. This is a biblical message. Number two. Number two. This is when the pastor, I'm going to call this a pastor plus model. Pastor plus, right? 
Pastor plus three people. Now, y'all, y'all, y'all have been to this church. Right? So, this, you know, you start, you plant, you know, you, you do things. Um, so, here, here, here you have the pastor, and we're going to add three. So, our capacity has expanded to this. One, two, three. So, you have a little bit of expanded capacity. And, you know, you may get... Two or three happy people. You may get two or three happy people in this in this model where you have pastor plus, the pastor plus model. But then you still have the need. Notice that the need is now expanded a little bit because when your capacity expands a little bit, the need expands a little bit. Now guess what sits out here? Oh, you got it. All those unhappy people. Why aren't we getting our needs met? Why don't I get seen? Why am I getting looked over? Why isn't the homework I gave the pastor getting done on time? Why, 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 why? (laughs) Now, the problem with this is that since it's not just the pastor, now it's pastor plus, right, right, we are going to target the three people that are actually helping the pastor with more complaints, more whining, and more grumbling. Because maybe if the pastor, you know, would just get a revelation from God through those that are helping him, he would do a better job at meeting my needs. <laughs> now, let's just give it, right, six months to a year. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. It's a lot of fire to stand under. Now, successful ministries sometimes find a way to continually bring people in as others are coming out, right? This is a this is a the pain cycle, right? 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 This is pretty much bride ministries. All right? I'm I'm just gonna be honest. This is pretty much bride ministries. We're still here, Pastor Plus. And I'm working this out. I'm working this out. Right? Of course, I'm not talking about anybody in this room. Now, now, number three, this is the kingdom model. Oh, everybody loves kingdom. Now, now, the kingdom model is where you have the pastor. Then you have servant hearts. And everybody that is on a growth journey saying, I'm saying yes to Jesus, and I'm submitting under this house, finds their role, finds their place, finds where God has called them to serve, finds a way to show up where a need is, and shows up on time. And instead of discouraging others, They are encouraging others. Now, what happens when you begin to do this is is you actually find this weird thing that happens where the need comes inside of the provision. And so you have all of this room for a move of God. Wow. Now, 
when a large contingency of the people at least have their hand up. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that you have to serve all the time or that you're always being taken advantage of. You know where people really feel taken advantage of? Model number two. No one else is showing up, and if I don't do this, then it just won't get done, and I am really, really a sucker. I need to find a healthy environment, right? I, I need to get out of Dodge. Yeah, that's where most people find themselves feeling taken advantage of, model number two. But the only way to get from model number two to model number three is for more people to say yes. That's the only way. That's the only way, right? Now, now... When you're managing a growing body and a growing level of buy-in, what you have to do is, is, is consider on our way to kingdom, right, how do we mitigate overtaxation? How many of you appreciate when the IRS overtaxes you? No. No one likes overtaxation. Period. Okay. Ah. No. So... You know, well, why doesn't Brian Ministries do a midweek service? Why don't we have worship nights? Why don't we just, where's the core strength to pull it off? We need the core strength to do anything more. And if we do more without the core strength and the buy-in, guess what? The three people that are already overtaxed get more taxed. And you know what that causes? Burnout. Burnout. And as a responsible leader, I'm just like, eh, no. No. I, I, and I told my whole staff, I said at the beginning of this year, I said, this is a year where we're going to enter sustainable ministry. Amen. Sustainable. <laughs> Y'all don't realize, Christian and I, between the two of us, have a tank that is like unreal. Honestly, I don't know <laughs> anyone that would have like put up with and pressed into what we have for this extended period of time under the stress and pressure we've been under for the years that we've been going at this with the betrayals, with the disappointments, with the hit jobs of the enemy, against all the odds we've been. I mean, it is just, you know, honestly, this is just the grace of God that we got this far, right? Um, people, I, 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 <laughs> but, but just because God gave us the grace to run at a certain pace does not mean that anyone that comes alongside of us will have the same grace. Right. Can't, can't expect it. Can't, yeah, it's just, it's just, we have to be realistic. So, so with this said, with this said, you know, can, can I just take a minute and talk about marriage for a second? Can I talk about marriage for a second? Now, this is interesting because we talk about the house of God as a house, right? Now, now, when we, when we look at the model, God serves, we serve. God serves, we serve. Everything is about serving. How can I serve you, right? To get here, we come asking, how can I serve? It's a, it's a very simple question, very simple heart condition that we can all embrace easy, right? We just choose to say, you know what? How can I serve? It's not hard. But I want to talk about marriage because I want to paint a picture for you guys. What works in the house of God tends to work in marriage very well. Now, I'm going to ask all the men. <laughs> men. How happy are you when your wife comes to you why didn't you take out the trash? Why aren't you making more money? Why don't you ever think about me? Why don't you ever care about me? You never take me out to eat. Why don't you do this? Okay? Just to be honest, right? How many of you enjoy that? Now, it's okay, right? I'm not, I'm not, this is not attacking women. I'm just asking a question. Okay, so, so based on all of the men who did not respond verbally, <laughs> I will just make an assumption, right, that the why didn't you approach does not make you happy. 
Now, how many of you men, no, no, just please, don't ghost me. (laughs) Now, you wake up in the morning, and the first statement out of your wife's mouth is, honey, how can I serve you today? Oh, boy, it's going to be a really good day. How can I serve? Oh, man. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Women. (laughs) How many of you appreciate it when your husband comes to you? Why isn't my dinner ready? Why don't you pick up the kids' toys? Why don't you do more with your day? Why are you so tired with three kids hanging off your shoulder? (laughs) Why aren't you showing up for my needs? Why, why, why? Why aren't you? How, How many of you guys like that? But man, oh man, (laughs) women, how many of you would appreciate it if you woke up and the first thing out of your husband's mouth holding breakfast, (laughs) freshly squeezed juice, and a latte, (laughs) eggs, I said, baby, how can I serve you today? How can I serve? (laughs) Now, Now, you know what's funny about this whole illustration. The men and women are thinking different things about that question, how can I serve? Right? You have different interpretations of what you would ask for. And that's okay. The principle is that works in what works in the house of God. Works in the house. And some of us can get a massive deliverance for our whole marriage right now. I'm I'm not kidding. Because you and your spouse can decide today that we're going to move right out of this and into this. Mutually. How can I serve you? Y'all okay with that? All right. Whiteboard session is over. Let's get to the real preaching. We're going to get this right, friends. We're going to get this right. We're going to work this out. John chapter 13. John chapter 13, verse 35. By this, all will know that you are my disciples. If you have love, people actually feel unsafe in environments where the majority of people that commit to attending also confess their unwillingness to serve as a matter of personal mandate or personal preference. Now, this doesn't take away from the fact that people may be in seasons. They may be under specific orders from heaven, like this is your season, this is what you do. But when it is a majority, it is a problem. And when there is a majority of people that fight against the vision of the house, the pastor says, this is what I see, this is what I want to do, this is what I want to go after. And the first confession... Oh, I don't really like that. I don't feel that in my spirit. I don't want to do that. That's going to be too much. It's tough. So, service. Now, moving on to the warrior's weapons. We have been talking about the right mindset. And I haven't gotten to the weapons because I'm still on the mindset. 
Because to engage with the kingdom of darkness effectively, we need our minds renewed. We have broken belief systems around how God's going to show up, why he's going to show up, who we are, who he is, and who our enemy is. Everything's twisted. And the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Because what we have to understand is that at the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, here's what Jesus accomplished. Colossians 2 in verse 13 through 15. And you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us. He has taken it out of the way, nailing it to the cross, having disarmed principalities and powers. He made a public spectacle of them triumphing over them in it let me explain God already won the devil lost the devil is defeated the devil is a liar he's a thief he's a goon he's a terrorist we don't negotiate with terrorists we shoot them in well okay <laughs> hold on hold on going too far going too far Whew. Okay, dodge that bullet. Okay, so, 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 um, no, 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 no. But we're talking about the devil here. We're talking about the devil and the kingdom of darkness, his demonic forces, his fallen angels. We don't tolerate them because they are defeated and we sit in the winner's box. Many of us have been confused about this fact. So we lay down and take it. And complain about it and whine about it and murmur about it and blame God. So we have to discard with internal conflicts around effective spiritual warfare. We've been zeroing in on four. We already knocked out the idea that the devil has dominion in the earth and owns it. Not true. You can go back and listen to that one. We already knocked out the idea that God is in control so all of our suffering is controlled by God. Not true. Knock that one out. And we started in on the idea that spiritual warfare is unbiblical. You know, because some people say, well, we're just supposed to pray for our enemies. So the love of God hits them, and, and, and then we, we just survive. Right? So we started that, and then I, I, I ran out of time. But what I am going to tell you is that there is a parable of Jesus that has been used to explain the exact opposite of what Jesus said it for. And it is found in Luke chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. It says, then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Now, what's the purpose of this parable? That men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Now, that's the point. That's the purpose. But this parable has been used to explain the exact opposite that men should probably grow weary of praying and expect to lose heart. I'm going to explain why. Verse 2, saying, there was a certain judge, there was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God, nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city, and she came to him saying, get justice for me for my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, though I do not fear guard, God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Then the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said, and shall not God avenge his own elect who cry out to him day and night, though he bears long with him? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily, nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? So people have basically taken this passage and said, well, God is an unjust judge who I have to come to repeatedly begging for his intervention. And it may take a long time. This is how this has been explained in some contexts. I have to beg God, come to him, you know, ask and ask and ask and ask. 
You know, he may or may not hear me. He just, just wastes time and takes forever to answer. And it's disheartening. So people have put God in the box of the unjust judge. And they, you know, they, they've come to all kinds of really ridiculous conclusions. But the whole parable is a, for the purpose of explaining that we should always pray and not lose heart. So, so how do we wrestle through this passage? How do we come to the right answer about how we engage God and shake heaven and earth? Well, first of all, we have to dismiss with the idea that God is the unjust judge. God's not an unjust judge. In fact, all throughout Scripture, God explains to us the foundations of his throne are righteousness and justice. God is a just judge. So if there is an unjust judge, it cannot be him. Because when we do our exegesis on the word of God, we have to understand that the word will be a self-interpreting book. You use the word to interpret the word. You can't see God say one place, I am full of justice and righteousness. In fact, in Hebrew, Sedek is both righteousness and justice. The word Sedek means the same thing, justice and righteousness at the same time. Those two concepts are inseparable from each other. So you have all of this evidence that God is just and righteous. And then all of a sudden we have a parable and the unjust judge is like, well, there's God. Oh, no, no. The unjust judge is someone else. Now, next point. There are judges in the natural. And there are judges in the spirit. And spirits can have a sphere of authority over a city, a state, or a nation, just like a human can. In fact, we would call them principalities. Right? They are spirits that have a jurisdiction over a city, a township, a state, a nation. Right? And when you get into territorial warfare, you will run up into these guys. And if you do not have a mandate for what you are doing in the spirit and you run up into these guys and tick them off, you may come under serious buffeting and retaliation. Now, <clears throat> um, not taking the temptation to go into territorial warfare, uh, 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 there, there are judges in the spirit, and they do have a determination over what goes on in a region. They do have a way in. They can hold things in place. They can actually withhold justice, just like judges in the natural can withhold justice, right? And you all know how our system works. This is how it works. Oh, yep, 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 yep. So-and-so just got elected judge. Is he one of us? Not yet. Let's bring him to a party and compromise him. You know how it works, right? So either you're in the club or we'll make you part of the club. Or we'll, right, hold you hostage. We'll get some dirt. You know, um, many people have, have, have experienced the, the absolute frustration of realizing you are at a, a, an illegal battle with a Freemason and your case is being presided over a Freemasonic judge. All they have to do is throw up that hand sign and suddenly, everything in that court case takes a turn. Right? Judges in the natural withhold justice, just like judges in the spirit. And so, what happens is, persistence is required to move things when justice is withheld by agency that is not of God. See, the judge in this parable did not regard God. He didn't get it. But God sent a widow to remind him of the order of things. Now, you have to understand how this widow, this woman in this passage, handles the judge. Because some of these judges need to be handled. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? Some of these judges, there's all this injustice, all this, you know, oh, Lord, just help me endure my mistreatment. It's like, no, no. The whole explanation is about how the widow, and, and God picks, well, he doesn't pick a strong man. I mean, he could have put Dan Duvall in here. 
Strong, good looking man with power. Ooh. Went against the judge. What a hero. No, he picked the widow. So you'd have no excuse. Right? <laughs> Don't mind me. Okay, so, so we need to realize that justice will be withheld in the natural. All right, that's, that's pretty much a promise. The world is broken because God sent you here to fix it with his power. You you get it? Right? The world is broken, but God put you here to fix it. Now, 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 this is a big break from God put me here to learn a lesson in humility and survive it. No. No. Like I sell my son. No. Don't touch that. He put you here to fix it. I want everybody to say, I'm a fixer. I'm a fixer. Yeah, that's right. You're a fixer. You're a fixer. We need to realize that justice will be withheld in the natural, and we are not to accept injustice. The widow was adamant about her cause, and so adamant that the judge actually fears for his personal safety. No, you need to get this. You need to get this. All right, let me preach this. Let me preach this. Spiritual judges can withhold justice. Physical judges can withhold justice, and both can be handled from the spirit. (laughs) And the thing is, the widow in this context demonstrates something. She demonstrates that we have the power to weary spiritual powers. And watch this. Even beat them black and blue. Now, now I knew I could do this before I figured out how this parable made any sense. But all you have to do is take a short perusal into the original Greek. And it just comes out. You know. In this passage, it says, he would not for a while, verse 4, the judge, he would not give justice for a while, but afterwards he said within himself, though I do not fear God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she wearies me. The word continual, the continual coming aspect of how the widow handles the unjust judge means an end. It says continual. It actually means end. It means the end of all things related to a purpose. The last in a succession or series. The word coming, as in continual coming, means to appear, to make one's appearance, to arrive at one place from another. And the word weary comes from the Greek word hippopiazo, which actually means to beat black and blue. Oh, so you thought I was kidding. See, I've been beating these things black and blue for a long time. I have a lot of experience. I have seen things. I have watched people watch things in the spirit. They can't explain. They say, Daniel, these fallen angels are running for their lives. What's going on? They don't even want to show up to the battle. We get to reach, and they'll be cleared out in the spirit. Whole region, just empty. Where'd they all go? Y'all don't know about the stealth chariot Todd tried to give me years ago. I just don't, I just didn't use it. They know when I'm coming. But that's the thing. Like, like I'm just one example. Like, what, what happens is when we learn how to step into the victory of Jesus Christ in our identity, even a widow, right, for that society, that would be like down here on the totem pole, on, on, on the scale of, of, of societal influence and strength to change things. Okay. With the power of God, this unjust judge that doesn't even fear God or regard man is afraid for his situation. This is something we all need to begin to internalize. 
you're a fixer. Yes. When there is injustice, you handle it. This whole statement about the way the widow handled the unjust judge could be rendered unless by her arrival at the end of her purpose or intent, she appears and manifests and beats me black and blue to the point that I am completely worn out. And now it makes a little bit more sense why I pray the way I do. People are like, what kind of, who do you think you are commanding angels? You know what? Your angels appreciate when I show up because they're like, thank you for commanding me, Dan Duvall. You know, it, it, it doesn't, I mean, I, <laughs> you're not using them. I'll use them for you. <laughs> We have to be aggressive about justice. We must contend for it. See, the devil's such a liar. Oh, you see that there? See, that judge, that God you serve, he's going to bear long with you. You just keep asking him for something, he won't give it to you. Go ahead, ask him again, see what happens. Oh. <laughs> didn't get answered. <laughs> now be sad. Be depressed. Be suicidal. Feel bad for yourself. Fiery arrows, right? So we carry them around. They just stick out of our head. We're defeated before we even start a process. We're beat before we even get to the starting line. We don't have strength, right, to, to fix the things we have been called to fix because we're broken in our mindset. The widow handles the judge the way you were designed to handle every opponent to justice that the Lord puts in your path. Amen. We all have callings in different spheres. We are kingdom Administrators, we come in as ambassadors of heaven where our citizenship is to superimpose a realm that is far beyond this one. Am I preaching okay? Should I ask for five more minutes? Now, you know, in church language, five minutes is an indeterminable <laughs> amount of time. You guys could be signing up for something you do not know. Of. But if you don't, I may just contend for it. <laughs> Let me explain something. God is described in contrast to the unjust judge. Let me explain. That widow goes to the unjust judge and puts that power in its place in fear. Fear of what is going to come upon it because she is about to pray his end into existence. Yes. 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 And then God stands on the other side of this conversation and he says, I'm going to bear along with you, which means I'm going to endure patiently and bravely in enduring misfortunes with you so you don't get worn out. See, the devil twisted the whole thing where it's like you thought that God was your unjust judge opponent and you're asking and he's saying no, declining justice, declining a move. No, you're going to battle against someone that needs to be handled and God is patiently enduring with you every step of that process of the imposition of justice. So you know that every blow you send against the unjust judges in this world, God backs. Which is why we are to pray and not lose heart. That's right. That's right. You have
have to understand the dynamic of what your prayer life means. How it works. The mechanics of the whole situation. Because when you get this ironed out, I promise you. Suddenly, you don't get so intimidated by these devils. By these processes. You know, I refuse to tap out. I can't tell you how much opposition, resistance, this, what, you know. But let me tell you something. (laughs) My wife uses this of me sometimes. She's like, well, what happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object? You know, the answer is which one has Jesus? (laughs) Okay. Okay. All right. That's what you got to ask. Which one has Jesus? Because let me tell you something. The enemy has set up several immovable objects, and you know what? We're still walking. (laughs) With the right mindset. I get it, and I'm trying to give it to you. I'm trying to give it to you. God will avenge his people speedily. When the legal requirements for the defrauding of the powers of darkness have been met. So, I do think that was actually five minutes. Y'all okay with that? Why don't you stand up? I'm going to pray for you. I'm I'm going to pray for you. Mm -hmm. Come on. Father God, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, we repent for broken mindsets. Lord God, we repent for blaming you for our lack of perceptions on who you are. And how you work with us, how you interact with us. Lord God, for blaming you for unanswered prayers for unmet needs. Lord God, for holding grudges towards you, unforgiveness. Lord God, we lay down feelings of betrayal. We lay down feelings, Lord God, of abandonment. We lay down feelings, Lord God, of powerlessness in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we embrace your word. We choose the truth of your word. And Lord God, we declare that where we have had lies, Lies, Lord God, that have hindered our prayer lives. Lies, Lord God, that have pulled us off the path of of, of being a fixer in the realms to which we have been sent. Lord God, we thank you for an interruption from heaven. We thank you, Holy Spirit of truth, for filling us with your truth. Excitement for the things of your kingdom. Passion for prayer. Lord God, an agreement to participate with the mandates and scrolls we have received from heaven. Lord God, I thank you for refreshing. I thank you, Lord God, for renewal. I Thank you, Lord God, for the spirit of boldness. Because it is written, the righteous, they are bold as lions. And so, Lord God, I thank you that in this house, we choose boldness in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we declare it doesn't matter what our past was. It doesn't matter how deeply the enemy has wounded us, how much he has come against us. Our God is greater. You are greater, Jesus, than our abuse, our programming, our torture, our mistreatment. You are greater, Lord God, than our oppositions, our blocks, the walls and the stumbling stones, the enemy has set before us. You are greater. You are exalted and you back us. Lord God you back us on the journey that you have put us on. You back us in our our exploits Lord God. And so we receive this truth today in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Y'all give the Lord a hand clap. Y'all give the Lord a hand clap. You know, if there's anyone online and you've never, never received Jesus, uh, you, maybe, maybe you just like listen to the church for the first time, like, wow, this is interesting. Who is this Jesus? You know, uh, 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 he is God. He is God. He died for our sins. And I am also going to extend an opportunity. You know, if anyone is listening, you get to this point and you're like, wow, this is really cool, but I don't even know who Jesus is for me. You can make a decision for him today. You can make a decision for him today because it is as easy. It is as simple as believing that Jesus Christ is the son of God. That he was 
born of a virgin, which he was. He died for the sins of mankind. He was raised to life on the third day. This is the Jesus that is written about in the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He is the focal point of the entire Christian Bible, and he loves you. And if you are ready to make him your God, you can repeat after me and say, Lord God, I come before you today to confess that I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He was born of a virgin. He died for my sins and was raised again to life on the third day. Jesus, I have sinned. And I choose to repent. And I renounce the devil. I receive cleansing by the blood that you shed at the cross. I receive you as my Lord and Savior today. Live your life in me and through me from now on. Thank you for saving me. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. All right, friends. God is good. We're going to see you all online next week. I will not be here. So be ready for that. <laughs> and uh, 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 with that said, we're going to dismiss. And uh, be sure to give somebody a big hug and tell them that you honor them. Amen. Amen.